Intentionality is to live in the awareness of his presence. Many believers are of the impression that God is a million miles away and that if they act well or they behave well, that every time they commit a good act, every time they do something that can be considered good behavior, every time they choose a spiritual action, they imagine that they get just a little closer to God. When they pray, they get closer. Or they think that if they go to church, they get a little closer. Or if they fast, they get a little closer. My friend, that's not what's happening. And if you think that's what's happening, then you need some help understanding your connection with the Lord. Acts chapter 17, verse 27 says, His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward Him and find Him, though He is not far from any one of us. We don't do these things to connect with God. We do these things from connection with God. And the reason that strengthens our spirit is precisely because we become more aware of Him when we do these things. So it's not a performance-based relationship. It's not as though if I do three good actions in one day and only one bad one that I'm closer to God now by net positivity, it doesn't work like that. It's not mathematic. It's not systematic. You cannot systemize that which is spiritual. That is the basis of religion and religion kills. You cannot systemize spirituality. That is legalism. Rather, when we approach the Lord, we must remember that he already lives within us, that we are already one with him. That connection cannot be undone. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. You have the Holy Spirit within you. You can't get any closer to God than having him live within you and having him dwell within your very being. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You're not your own. You've been purchased with the price. He dwells in you. And so one of the habits that have to begin to form in your life is intentionality. That is to be aware of his nearness. The scripture very clearly says his purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. I want you to do something that may seem strange. Take your hand out and I want you to put it in front of your face, just, just like this, just right here just like that. And I want you to look at your hand. I want you to look at how close your hand is to your face. And I want you to realize that God's presence is closer to you than your hand is to your face. Like he's right here in front of you. He's not off a million miles away. He doesn't abide at some great distance. His presence and light permeates your very being. You are a carrier of the glory, a host with the presence of the Holy Spirit. You are a habitation for God. He dwells in you. Think about that. And so if we are to become more consistent in prayer and the word, we absolutely must become aware of the presence of God that dwells with us. And in order to do that, you have to slow the pace of your life. Everything in our culture today, everything that this world has to offer, that's hyperbole, of course, but for the most part, what the world has to offer, fast pace, like this, instant, convenient, on your terms, instant gratification. Anything that we desire, we can order it. I mean, Everything online is basically the everything store. Anything you want, you can have it. And you can have it in a variety of different ways. Convenience, speed, fast-paced. We're so used to that. Think about the trajectory of social media and the format of social media. Think about the fact that they are forming, all the major social media platforms are now forming their algorithms and the user experience around a faster pace. Who has time for a three minute video anymore? Who has time for a 10 minute video? And what's beginning to happen is we are being conditioned to expect immediate gratification. And because of that, we neglect prayer because prayer isn't going to abide by those same terms. You are not the Lord. 
You are not the king. You are the servant. We are the servants, his children. He is the father. He is the Lord. He is the ruler. And yet we snap our fingers at God and say, God, why didn't I get an encounter with you? We get angry with them. Well, so-and-so told a story and they encountered you in this way. Or my brother or my sister or my pastor or my friend, they seem to have encounters with you all the time. Why won't you give that to me? And, and, and we, we, we huff and we puff and we become angry and we're so entitled that we expect God to respond instantly to everything we request. And then we fall into self-pity, saying things like, oh, God never listens to me. Oh, God never comes through for me. Who gave you that breath with which you are complaining? Was it not God? Don't you trust his wisdom? Isn't he sovereign over all? Don't you believe he has a plan? Do you not believe that he has good intentions for you? Do you not believe that he's working to develop your character even when you can't see it? Do you not believe the promise? He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Do you not believe that he is the potter, we are the clay, and that he is forming and fashioning you with the circumstances of life? No. Well, that's demonstrated in the fact that we want everything like that. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, not those who rush the Lord. We don't wait upon the Lord anymore. We rush him. We don't like to wait. I want the encounter now, and I want it on my terms, and I want to feel this, and I want to experience that, and if you don't do that, then I'm not going to believe I'm free. And if you don't do that, then I'm not going to believe your word that tells me I'm victorious. And if you don't do that, then I'm not going to believe the scripture that tells me that you are not far from any one of us. We lack that awareness of what he's doing. We lack that awareness of his presence in our lives. And because of this, we cease in the area of intentionality. And when you're intentional, you become more consistent in prayer and the word. But that's a principle we lack. Why? Because of the pace of life. Because everything revolves around our convenience. Because everything revolves around our timing. You know, the world has changed. God has not. Culture has changed. God has not. Everything around you may be speeding up, but God still works on his own time. Do we really expect that we should receive of God in the same way that we consume all other things? Do we really expect that God should respond to us the way that some company that's trying to earn and keep our business responds to us? I mean, some of you, if you were leaving God a Yelp review, you'd give him Three and a half stars because he took too long. Well, the service was great, but it just took too long. Or it would have been wonderful, but I had to go. I had things to do. You know, you think of these old revivals from times past, and the church would spend hours in church, morning to night. We'd go to work, come home, grab a quick dinner, rush off to a revival, they'd spend hours in church. No one complained about the time. Why? Because they were so hungry for the things of God. People will travel long distances just to experience a move of God. Some of us won't even turn around and open the Bible. I'm not saying this to condemn you. I'm saying this to challenge you. Because where there is correction, there is hope for a new direction. Where there is correction, there is hope of transformation. God would not be bringing correction to you right now if it weren't possible that you change. But the very fact that it is possible that you change is why he's bringing correction in the first place. We must learn to slow down the pace of mind, slow down the pace of life, slow down the pace of our expectations, and we must learn to become aware of God in every moment. Not just in a church service, not just when we go to the prayer room, though you should pray, and though you should, as Matthew 6, 6 says, sometimes lock yourself away and pray. But rather, we must learn to also be aware of the abiding nearness of God. Listen to me. He's in the room with you right now. And if you'll just slow down. I know you're on the internet right now. And there are a thousand things you could click on right at this very moment. 
I know there are many different forms of entertainment that are pooling for your attention in this very moment. But if you, with a heart filled with faith, will just allow yourself to slow down and become aware of his abiding presence, you would know that he's in the room with you. He's there with you now. And not only is he there with you right now, he's closer than you could ever possibly know. He dwells within you. You are one with the Holy Spirit. You are one with the Holy Spirit. That is the abiding presence of God. His love, his peace, his joy, it's yours for the taking. If only you would slow down. Slow down. He's looking at you right now. He's in the room with you right now. He's listening to you right now. The abiding presence of Almighty God. Stop waiting. Listen to me. Stop waiting for an emotional experience to confirm what you should already know by the Scripture and by the Spirit of God. That He is near. You want to be consistent in prayer and the Word. You need intentionality. Now, Holy Spirit, be their constant reminder. Be their constant reminder. I want you to lift your hands and even write this in the comment section and say this and write it. Help me, Holy Spirit. Don't be ashamed to pray that. I'll say it a thousand times a day if I have to. And sometimes I do need to say it a thousand times a day. Help me, Holy Spirit. Now, Father, I pray that they would be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Give them the grace, strengthen that desire that they might implement these habits in their lives. Father, I thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for being so patient with us, even when we don't deserve it. I bless your people. And I pray, Father, that this would be a great season of transformation. Let this be the time that it finally sticks. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. I want to challenge you today to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to respond in obedience to what God is putting on your heart. And I want you to go right now to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate to give a single gift or go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly ministry supporter. Now, those are two different ways of giving. I want you to consider one or both of them. Many of you can give a one-time gift of $25, $50, even $100, And you might be tempted to say, well, it's not going to do much. But think about if everybody thought that way. If everybody thought that way, the ministry would never grow. The ministry would never have the resources it needs to expand and to continue the work. But by you giving, you're joining your support with thousands of believers around the world. And all of you collectively are supporting live streams like this, the content that we release, the Holy Spirit School, the events that we do around the world. Freely we received, so freely we give, and we take the biblical approach of asking for free will offerings. That is the biblical way of doing it. It's the strategy of faith. We don't charge for anything. We give it away for free. And people like you who can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit respond because you love the gospel, because you love the Lord, because you love souls, because you're blessed by this ministry and you wanna see others blessed. So go right now, give a one-time gift or a single gift at davidhernandezministries.com slash donate or become a monthly ministry supporter.